My son. or turn the mic on. There we go. It helps. It helps the sound guys if I actually turn the mic on. They can't do that for me. Well, good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to Stony Run Pentecostal Free Will Baptist Church this morning. We're so glad to have you here with us today. I do want to make a few announcements. I got quite a few announcements, actually, that I'm going to go ahead, but I'm going to try to get through them very quickly. Um, first of all, Wednesday evening service for the adults. We will have it in the old sanctuary because the youth will be over here um, practicing their program and everything. So Wednesday evening services will be over in the old sanctuary for the adults. Also, bingo is Monday morning at 10.30 a.m. for seniors bingo. If you've not signed up for that, please sign up for that. I believe they've got a sign-up sheet on the table um, in the back. Also, the adult Christmas party is Friday night, December 7th at 7 p.m. It's $8 a person, $15 a couple. Today is the deadline to sign up. Please see Kim Bass to sign up if you're planning to attend. She'll be at the door at the end of service today. You can pay Gina Williams at the door on the 7th for your meals, but we need to know how many to prepare for, so please sign up with Kim Bass today. Kim's in the back corner right there. Wave at everybody, Kim, so they all see you. There you go. That's Kim Bass. If you don't know her, um, she'll be at the door at the end of service to, uh, to sign everyone up for that so we can get a good count. I'm here to tell you that the food will be fabulous. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? It will be awesome. So, so make sure that you, you get in on this. Also, I want to remind everyone the adult Christmas cantata all year long will be Sunday, December 16th at 6 p.m. So please make plans to attend uh, uh, that. Um, one more thing I want to mention just to kind of get it in, in, your, um, in your planning is that we're going to have a New Year's Eve service at Benson Pentecostal Free Will Baptist Church at 7 p.m., um, I'm going to bring the message that night, and the way that it works is the service will start at 7. We'll have a service in the sanctuary at um, Benson. 
Um, we'll have preaching, and then they have a covered dish meal after the service in their um, fellowship hall. So please, um, when you're attending, please bring a covered dish and come on out. And let's bring in the new year together. It's going to be a lot of fun, I'm sure. And it's going to be great to, uh, to fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ in Benson. So please get that on your um, radar. Uh, other than that, I don't have anything. So I'm going to turn it over to Joey real quick and let him, uh, him do his thing. Thanks, Pastor Rick. It's good to see everybody today. How's everybody doing? I don't see why I slapped over, so I think you're alive. Uh, it's all right. Um, just a couple of things I have to uh, mention. Our, our, the, the Christmas um, student uh, Christmas dinner show is December the 9th at 6 p.m. Be here. Um, if you'd like to attend families, please let us know. Uh, let Miss Kim Bass know as well, or let me know, um, so we can prepare food. We will have food that night, kind of buffet-style soup and sandwiches. Uh, everyone's invited. Um, this Christmas program is going to be awesome, funny, laughs, uh, choir it's going to be some good singing we are very talented here in our with our students uh, uh, many great singers i can't wait for that night they're ready and they're excited so um, come out feel free to come out for that event it is free um also the christmas our student christmas party is december the 14th friday evening um we're going to have it in our new building um it, it's almost about ready to go and i know the kids are excited about that um so we'll have it over there um also our Angel's Christmas Tree. We have several families we're helping out this year um, through schools and through Northeast PFW, PFW Church. I'm sorry, I can't speak today. Um, if you'd like to uh, adopt a child for this Christmas season, please come get one of the tags off of here. Um, I've already given several out. Several families have already been taken care of. I think I've got three more on this tree that need help. Um, you'll be helping out somebody in our community locally, and then I believe two of them are in the uh, Wallace area that uh, they've been affected by flooding. Uh, families have lost everything, so we're able to help out of there, out there as well. So please take one, help us out, guys. You you can wrap the gifts, bring them back to the church, if you can have the receipts for us, so we can kind of know what's what, and we uh, we'll deliver it to our pastor Kevin uh, at Northeast PFW Church. Um, and I think I gotta have his back pretty soon, um, around December the tenth. So if you can next next week or so, if you feel like helping out, grab a couple of those for us and. Um, and it's help a child out so they'll have some Christmas presents under the tree this year. Um, I believe that's all I have. Oh, yes. Okay. Two more things. I should just get her to do it. She remembers so good. My wife is awesome. Um, Backpack Buddies, guys. Uh, if you don't know, this, it's a program that we get work through Plainview Elementary. Uh, we help out ki children that are less fortunate to have food on the weekend. It's something that they're, um, the school system does that they notice kids who, who seem to... I, Less fortunate, I would say. Those that maybe don't have a chance to have the luxuries that we are able to have. Um, we, we donate food. That's uh, five meals all together. It's um, three suppers, two, or no, more than five meals. Three suppers, two lunches, and two, two breakfasts. Uh, two breakfasts. Um, and, we're, and we're doing 12 children a week. Um, it's around, Miss Kim, how much is it per child? Seven dollars. Yeah, so yes, we're just twelve children that we help out. We spend eighty-five dollars a week. Um, this is something you can help give donations-wise, um, and you can set it apart from your tithes and offering um, to give to this. We we will appreciate your help. Twelve kids is a lot. I know you probably have two or three yourself, um, and you know how tough it is. But you know this is we we are truly blessed here. Um, God, if we, uh, if you can't, you can't see that. Uh, I, I pray that you seek God and His counsel because we have so much that we should be thankful for. And God tells that we need to spread that and give it to others that need help. Um, so, guys, if we can get your help with that, also Christmas play practice for us is this afternoon. Um, the mime with the ladies uh, starts at two thirty, and then the three thirty for the uh, the rest of the choir and everything else. So, guys, I, if you need having more questions. Come, concerns just seek us out me or Dana uh, Miss Kim or Christy also about backpack buddies they know a lot that in fact that information as well um, it, I know we're truly best and we've done a lot so far guys let's continue to do God's work because people will see this and see the good in it and see hopefully Christ and that's what we're supposed to be showing to everybody um, that's all I have today we'll pass it to awesome I, I, I'll pray with you guys if I like to stand up we'll we'll go to start the service off with prayer today um, 
the Holy Spirit is here. We're going to invite his presence to partake with us. Uh, open your hearts today, guys. So we, we're praising the one true God, the God that gives all that is good, the God that has woke you up this morning, put breath in your lungs, and has brought you here today. Be excited about that. Praise his name because you could be a whole lot worse today. Amen. You could be in a place, you could be in a ditch dead. You could be, yeah, I mean, there's people confined to wheelchairs, people with colostomy bags, people that can't even go to the bathroom themselves. We take it for granted. Be thankful what God has done in your life. If you got food on your plate, thank God for it. Praise his name. Lift his hands in his presence. That's what the word says. And I want to be more about his word. Shouldn't you be more about his word? Come on. That's what a church is supposed to be live and active. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord God, for what you do and continue to do in our lives. Let us be thankful at all times because all that is good comes from your hand, Lord God. You speak it, Lord, and there it is. And we should be thankful for it. Let's come in your presence today with lifted hands. Let's thank the one true God. Let's give it all today, Lord God. Let's lay it all down right here, Lord, so we can receive more of your blessings. Let's come in your presence, clap our hands, and sing praises and put a smile on our face, dear Lord God. Let us do that today. Lord Jesus, let's seem like we're alive like your word is. Lord God, because you're going to come back for a church, and that time is soon coming. If you want to see it, if you don't want to believe it, the, the sky will soon crack open, and Lord Jesus will call his people home, and I'm going to be a part of it, Lord God. So I'm going to praise your name today for that promise. It reigns true to that day, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen and amen.
praise you. We 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 lift you up. 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 We lift you
Amen. Amen. If I get the ushers to come forward for the offering today. Isn't God good to us? All the time. He's the provider. He's our healer. He's our savior. He's the one that's with us all the time. No matter where you walk, if you know him, he's with you. He, he goes with you everywhere. So don't feel like you're ever alone. You're ever forsaken because God is there. So let's pray over our offering this morning. Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus for all your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your love, God. Lord, that you provide for us, and we thank you for that. So God, as we come together today, Lord, we ask that you bless the gift and the giver. Multiply it. Use it for your kingdom. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey! 
Wow, Branna. That was awesome. I like that. Mama's crying. It must have been good. That's good. That's good. Y'all got a buzz up here that's, um, it is buzzing. Aha. There we go. We found the buzz. I'm so ADD. I'd never get through the sermon with that buzz. I'm just going to tell you. I'd be like, there's a buzzing going on. I, I, <laughs> wow. Amen. That was awesome, though, Brenna. Thank you. You really blessed us with that one today. That's, that's awesome. I, I, remember, and I remember when you were younger, and we were all waiting for you to really, you know, mature. I guess is the right word. In your voice, I think you're there. I'm just saying. I, I mean, we really, we're, we all sat and listened, and we said, man, that girl is going to be something someday, and she really is. And, and we're so thankful for it. Today, I want to talk about this. Um, you ever have a time where you felt like if you could just get over the hump, everything would be all right? If, if a certain situation would take place, that, that everything would be okay, that if you could get what you thought you needed, Amen. then everything would be okay. Y'all ever had that time? Okay, well, what happens when you got what you thought you needed? And everything won't all right. And everything, when you asked for something and you said, that's all I need, this is what I need, and when you finally got what you thought you wanted, it totally was not what you needed. Today, I want to, I want to talk about that today a little bit in this message today, some, some of this. You know, we, we all have a plan, but a lot of times what we're searching for and seeking is not really what we need. It's what we think we need. But it's not what God knows that we need. And many times, what, and God is so much wiser than we are. We, we would really, if he really led us, if he really answered all our prayers the way we prayed them, we would be a messed up bunch because God knows the deal. He knows it all. And so he, he fixes things for us. And sometimes he just tells you flat out, no, not going to do that because that's going to mess you up. So I want to go ahead and read from 1 Samuel today. I want to read verses 1 through 13 in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. I, I want to read this because I think that this is a, it's a time in the, the history of, of Israel where, where they felt like they needed a king like everybody else. We want a king like everybody else has, God. We want a king. We want, we want a king. We want a king. And, and, and so God finally relented and said, okay, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you a king. I'm going to give you what you've asked for, but understand that it's not going to turn out the way you thought. And see, that's what happens in our lives a lot of times. We think we need this, or we need that, or we need something. And, and when we finally get it, see, sometimes God just relents and says, you know what? I'll tell you what, you've been praying so hard for this. I'm going to answer your prayer to show you that that's not really what you need. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13, it tells us this. It says, Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I've rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I'm sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I've provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, Well, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he, he'll kill me. But the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord, and then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I name to you. So Samuel did what the Lord said, and he went to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons, and he invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab and he said to him, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So Jesse called Abinadab and made him to pass before Samuel. 
And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to to Jesse, are all the young men here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest. And there he is, keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him. For we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him. Now he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you that you have a plan, you have a purpose, God. And Lord, there, there are times that you, you give us what we ask for, knowing good and well that it's not what we need. But we've got to kind of go through that process, Lord, to figure out what we really do need. Lord, sometimes we have to get what we don't need in order to realize what we do. So Father, I thank you today for your word. I thank you that you've recorded this. Lord, that the people of God asked for a king and it really wasn't what they needed. And so you sent them one that was exactly who they needed. And Lord, we just thank you for that today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so I started, I started looking at this, and I was really, I was fascinated by this. Um, in in verse, six, verse 1 of, of chapter 16, um, the Lord said to Samuel, you know, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I've rejected him from reigning over Israel? I, I want you to think about this for a second. Any time that you make a change in your life, you possibly will mourn see everybody thinks that that we just mourn over like the loss of a loved one and I'm not saying that we don't mourn over the loss of a loved one and that's a process and I was telling somebody this morning you know grief has 10 steps and you've got to go through every single step of grief in order to get to the other side and some of you here today are still grieving have just recently lost loved ones and I I do not by any means um, discount your morning today. So I'm not talking to anyone who has a, a recent wound. You're going to mourn. You better mourn. Because if you don't mourn, you'll never become whole again. You've got to go through that. So that's not really what I'm talking about right here. This is, this is something to where you have, have had something on your horizon for a while. And, and, and we may mourn over many things. We can mourn over the loss of a loved one. But we can also mourn over a loss of a job. How many of you have ever lost a job that you just thought you were going to work there your whole life? That that was going to be what you were going to do. And then all of a sudden the rug's pulled out from under you. They tell you, they give you the little thing and say, look, you're done. And, and you're like, oh my gosh. What do I do now? Or I got some folks in the congregation, they've lived in their house all their life, raised their families in their homes all their life, and the state has decided they're going to change the off-ramps, the on-ramps, and all that stuff, and all of a sudden they send you a letter and say, you know that house you've lived in all your life? That one you raised your children in? That one that you thought you were going to age out and eventually, you know, go on to be with the Lord from that place? And now they tell you, look, you got 30 days, get out. That causes grief, mourning. It's a loss. It's something that you're like, gosh, no. And sometimes it's a loss of relationships. It can be friendships. It can be a divorce. It can be all kinds of things that throw us into grief. The thing about grief is it is a process, but it's a process that we've got to work our way through to get to the other side to be whole. And I promise you that when you get to the other side, you will be more whole than you were when you started the process. God tells Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I've rejected him from reigning over Israel? I mean, he has been mourning over the loss. Now, now this was the one that he had to anoint. This is the one that he had to install as king. This is the one that God said, choose this one and do this. Now, God had warned them what was going to happen, that it wasn't going to turn out good, that he was going to be like the kings in the rest of the world. But nonetheless, Saul was mourning over this loss. Well, we can just stay in our grief. We can mourn and mourn and mourn and just keep on mourning. And some folks, they get stuck in grief. And they can't seem to get out. So the Lord tells Saul, or Samuel, he said, Fill your horn horn with oil and go. 
Fill your horn, horn with oil and go. I'm sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. Fill your horn with oil and go. There's times in our lives where we need to fill our horn with oil and we need to go. We need to get up on and, and move. See, here's the thing is a lot of folks, why we, we want to pray about everything and you better pray about everything. Prayer needs to be an integral part of your life. You need to be listening to God. And all a prayer isn't talking. I know some people think, well, it's just talking. No, 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 no. 90% of prayer is listening. 10% is talking. When you get in the presence of God, you better listen. Close your mouth and listen to what he's telling you. Because he speaks. Our God still speaks. He is alive and well. He speaks through his word. He speaks through his spirit. He speaks through people around us that he puts in our path. How many of you have had someone speak and you know that that was God speaking through them? I mean, that God speaks. We need to listen to God. We need to pray for guidance. But eventually, we need to fill our horn with oil. And we need to get up and we need to go where God has told us to go. The problem is, is, a lot of times we'll hide behind that. We'll say, well, I'm still praying about that. I'm still praying about that. When you know good and well, God has told you to fill your horn with oil and go. If this, if this avenue is not working, if this approach is not working, if that's not it, if that's not the answer, and you keep telling God, well, God, I know that's the answer. I know that's what it is. I, I, man, Lord, I know, I know, I know, I know. And he's telling you, no, 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 no. Eventually, you need to accept what God has told you. You pray for guidance, but eventually, you need to go. Get off your knees and get busy with what God has you to do. Because you see, a, a walk with Jesus Christ is a walk of action, of things to do. Love is a verb. If you're called to love people, that's a verb. Prayer is a verb. It's something we do. All these things. Faith, to me, is a verb. Because when you walk in faith, it's, it's something you do. It's an action. All these things are actions. All these things, sooner or later, we may stand and wait on the Lord. And wait for His salvation. But eventually, we got to go. I was making, my wife has been teasing me this week. Because I told her that if we had the redneck version of the Bible, that they would use y'all in there. But I was thinking, okay, well, you know what would be really cool in a redneck version of the Bible? Because most rednecks, you know, they have a certain language to them. But you, could you imagine the redneck translation of the Bible? Moses comes up to the Red Sea. He takes the staff, lifts it up, and says, hey, y'all, watch this. <laughs> Isn't that usually when we get in trouble, when somebody says, hey, watch this? Isn't that usually the, the, the last words that you said? But the thing is, is that eventually we've got to raise the staff of faith. We've got to believe God, and we've got to go forward. And, you know, we've got to just be feeling in our spirit, man, watch this. Watch what God is going to do. Get off your knees and get busy. Fill your horn with oil and go. I'm sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I've provided myself a king. Quit, quit mourning. I've made provision. And that's the thing about it is a lot of times we don't know what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. God has already made provision. Take your horn with oil and go. Go. But here's what happens. In verse 2, Samuel says, well, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he'll kill me. Fear. Anytime that we change anything in our life, usually it's accompanied by fear. Is this going to work out? Is this going to happen? How many of you have taken a new job and you didn't know? You're like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Is this going to really work or not? I know I've been there. Well, I, I don't know. Is this going to work? Am I going to be able to make it there? What's going to happen? You know, we get afraid. And, and then we start saying, well, I thought God told me to take that job. And I thought God told me to go there. But now, now I'm afraid that things may not, might, may not be there. And, and we start getting, we, we paralyze ourselves because we start worrying about things. I know that there's some worriers out there. Look, I can find a hundred reasons not to do something. And none of them can even happen. Yeah. We get anxiety, you get anxious, but the Word of God says, you know, that if you'll cast all your anxiety on Him, that He'll take it all away. But there's still times we get very anxious in life, and we, we figure out all these ways that it's not going to happen, or it's not going to work out, or whatever it is. We must overcome our fear. But the thing is, is everything comes with a cost. Everything we do in life, it costs you something. 
Everything. Every change, every decision, every relationship. Everything you do costs you something. There's no free ride. Even, even grace, which is free, it costs you something because you've got to submit to God and receive the gift of God and receive grace and receive His salvation. You've got to submit in order to receive the free grace of God. It all costs you something. What's that cost you? That costs you to be submitted to God. It all costs something. Fear must be overcome. You know, Samuel's scared to death. He says, I can't go out and, and anoint a new king with Saul still living. What am I going to do then? If he hears that I've anointed a new king, he's surely going to come kill me. He's going to kill me. But here's the thing. Go in the power of God. God's already got it figured out. See, that's the thing about it. He's already got every situation. He's got it all figured out. We've got to go in the power of the Lord. And if he sends you, if he sends you, he'll keep you. He will keep you if he sent you. The problem is, is many people are not sent. And then they whine because God hasn't kept them. But it's because they're not in the will of God. They're in their own will. They've made their own mind up. This is how I'm going to do it. This is what's going to happen. I know this is the best, best case scenario, and that's what's going to happen. We've got to make sure that we're listening to God. Lord told him, take a heifer with you. And he says, I've, tell him that I've come to sacrifice to the Lord and then invite Jesse to the sacrifice. I'll show you what to do. Uh, you shall anoint for me the one I name to you. I was looking at this, you know, he gives, gives Samuel the plan. He lays it right out for him. I wish God would lay it out that clear for me at times. I wish I'd get an email or a text or, or a, a post on Facebook, Messenger or something where God would just go, here you go, Rick, this is what you need to do. Do this and this and this. Man, that would be, wouldn't that be easy? Wouldn't that be awesome? We could just open it up. Oh, oh God, God, I got email from God today. Oh, what's he say? Oh, man, this is cool. It's going to be a good day. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. He told him, he said, I will show you what to do. You shall anoint for me the one I name to you. The one I name to you. See, that's the whole thing is we must listen for God's voice in the midst of our situation. We've got to hear God. And see, folks don't like, I'm telling you, we like to talk way more than we like to listen. But we've got one mouth and two ears. So I, I think God has a, another plan. Maybe we're supposed to listen twice as much and talk half as much. So we got to listen for God's voice. See, the problem, and this is just a bonus here. I'm going to give you this bonus. Most folks, when they're talking to people, they're not even listening to what the other person's saying to them. You know what they're trying to do? Figure out how they're going to respond to what they've just said to them. Think about that for a second. How many times have you been talking to somebody and you're not really even listening to what they're saying to you because you're making up, you're, you're working up your own response. How am I, well, I going to respond to this? Anybody been guilty of that? Pastor has. I have. I'm sitting there thinking, okay, well, what am I going to say to this? What am I going to say to this? What the look, man, shut, just, just listen. We got to listen for God's voice. Saul as king for Israel appeared to be the best choice. Man, he was tall, and he was handsome. He was the perfect choice in the world's eyes. But just because something looks right, it doesn't mean it is right. See, so many times we try to base everything on what man and what we think man wants, and we say, well, this has got to be right because it, 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 it's got to be right. But that doesn't mean that it's right just because it looks right. We've got to listen for the voice of the Lord in the midst of our life. Let's look a little bit further down. So he's going to tell God, he's going to say, or God's going to tell Samuel, you shall anoint for me the one I name to you. So notice what happens after that. Samuel is obedient. So Samuel did what the Lord said. He went to Bethlehem and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peaceably? Because they remembered that he had just killed a king not too long ago and hacked him all to pieces that Saul was supposed to kill. So obviously they were a little nervous when Samuel comes to town. Look, I'm telling you, man, those priests back then, they didn't play. Man, I mean, God would tell them, hack them to pieces, man. They'd get their sword out and hack away. That'd be hard on the congregation, and you know, attendance would definitely be down. If the, I'm just saying, you know, you can't go out here with a sword and hack the people to pieces. I mean, it ain't going to happen. But they did back then. Samuel, man, he'd hack them to pieces. God says, kill them all, every one of them. Whack, 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 and away they went. 
So Samuel did what the Lord said. He went to Bethlehem, and they're like, do you come peacefully? They're trembling. And he said, oh, peacefully, I'm come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves. Come with me to the sacrifice. And then he consecrates Jesse and his sons, and he invites them to the sacrifice. So all this is taking place. Then the Lord says to Samuel, do not look at his physical stature because I've refused him. I want you to understand something. When they came, he looked at Eliab and he said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. He looked at this young man. This was a handsome young man. This was a strong young man. This was the one that you would pick. Have y'all ever, ever done that before? Do you realize that most people are judged by their appearance alone? That when people look at you, the very first impression they make is usually the most lasting impression. And it's based almost entirely upon what you look like. Whatever you look like, they decide that that's who you are. In your, in your life, in your circumstances, there's times where people will judge you because of what it looks like in your life. Not because of who you are, but who you appear to be. Eliab appeared to be the one. He appeared to be one like Saul. Now, I'm sure that he was tall and he was handsome and he was rugged and he looked like he would be a great king. And when they looked at him, they said, oh man, that one right there, that's got to be the one. But the Lord says to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. See, the Lord does not see as man sees. See, that's the thing about it. God sees your heart. He sees my heart. He sees your heart. He sees everyone's hearts. And so many times we look at someone and we judge them because of the way they look and not know what their heart really is. We don't know. We look at them. We may look at their criminal record in their past. And we say, oh, well, that person right there, obviously, they can't be no good because they have been to jail or they've been to prison. Or you might look at someone's credit report and say, well, look, their credit's all jacked up. What in the world? But it could have very well that they were in a terrible car accident that, that absolutely exceeded every amount of insurance you could have. And then their whole life was torn to pieces because everything they had went to pay lawyers and things it could have been that their family was racked with cancer or sickness or something they took every penny they had to, to and sold everything where they could and still didn't have enough Amen. and now their credit's all jacked up and people look at them oh well, obviously they were they were loose with their money they didn't take care of things and they you know obviously they're they're not financially responsible when it may very well have been something completely outside of their control but we, we judge. We look and we judge. We look at each and every person in this place and church on Sunday and we look at them and we make a judgment. Every one of them. People do it all the time. They look at this one, they look at that one, they look at that one, they look at that one. We all judge. Every one of us. And we shouldn't do it. God knows our hearts. He knows who we are. The Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. If all our hearts were sitting out here today, what would we look like? You know, if everyone, if God, if we just saw the heart in each person and, and searched for the heart in people and really took the time to listen to what they were saying instead of trying to formulate an answer that you thought that they needed, if we would just look at their hearts and see who they really are, it would be a different world if we could just look through those things. But it's like the old saying, don't judge a book by its cover, and yet everyone, the first thing we do is we look at the cover of the book. Oh, I wonder if it's a good book. Ooh, nah, you know. Lord doesn't see as man sees. Just because it looks right to us doesn't necessarily mean it's God's plan for us. Just because everything fell in place perfectly, that doesn't mean it's God's plan. Sometimes the hardest things that we've got to go through are absolutely God's plan. That the hardest path sometimes is absolutely God's path for us. Not the easy path, not the broad path that leads to destruction, but the narrow path that's hard and winding and leads to life. Look, there's times when we've got to find the narrow path. And find the path that leads to life. But when God gives you the plan, you got to go with it. You can't just quit in the middle. 
See, a lot of times we say, oh, this is getting hard. What, what am I going to do? I mean, I want you to look at this. It says that, that Eliab came before Samuel, and, and the Lord says, you know, that's not him. Samuel said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge his physical appearance. I have refused him. That's not him. Okay. So Jesse calls Abinadab that he might pass before Samuel. So he, he pulls another one up. And, and, and nope, neither. The Lord has not chosen that one. And then he makes Shammah to pass by. And he says, nope, that's not it. He had seven. He walked seven of them by Samuel. And Samuel's received a word from God. He knows what God wants. He's listening to the voice of God. And God keeps saying, nope, 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 nope. You ever been in that situation? Well, you just know it's got to be one of these. Hold on now. I've only had, I only got seven choices here. What's going on? The, the, but, but God, you, you, you told me, I'm listening to you. You said that you shall anoint for me the one I named to you. That, that I'm supposed to anoint the one, God, that you named to me, but you've not named any of them. I've got seven that have gone by. There's not nary one that you've said yes. Don't settle. Until you get what God has promised. See, a lot of folks would have quit. They'd either done this. They either said, well, obviously, I didn't hear the Lord right. Run them all back in front of me again. Let's look at them one more time. Maybe one of the, maybe God's going to say yes. This, maybe I just didn't hear it right. So run them all by again. Samuel didn't do that. Maybe Samuel could have said, well, you know, I quit. How many of you ever quit anything? Nobody, just me. I've quit. I've quit a many a time. I've quit. Sometimes I've quit and it was too early, and sometimes I quit and it was too late. I've had both ends of the spectrum. You know, sometimes we just quit. He's like, man, they've run seven by me to be sure. God said he's going to tell me which one. He's told me no on all seven. I don't know where he's at, but he's not here. I'm out of here. I'll see y'all at the Robin's Nest. We're going to go get maybe on a full stomach. Anybody ever ate a robin's nest? Just the back row, right? <laughs> maybe on a full stomach. I can, I can make a bet. I can hear God better on a full stomach. So maybe, maybe I need to, need to go get something to eat. Maybe I need to, but that's not what Samuel said. Samuel said to, to Jesse, the Lord's not chosen these. And Samuel says, are, are all the young men here? I mean, is there, is there any more? Because you brought, you brought them up here. What, are they all here? Because God told me he's going to choose one today. And then he said, there remains yet the youngest. And there he is, keeping the sheep. Oh, the little shepherd boy. How cute. Yeah, sure, he'll be the king, Right? I mean, if you had to pick, which one would you pick? The one keeping the sheep or the good-looking strong ones? I mean, see, so many times we, we make the choice with our eyes. We're not listening to God. We're watching through our eyes. We're making our choices that way. We're not walking by faith. We're walking by sight. We trust our eyes. We look at things. Lord has not chosen these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Then he said, there remains yet the youngest. And there he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him down. But well, we're not going to sit down till he comes. Look, I've come here to anoint the next king. And I'm not leaving. I'm not sitting down. I'm not stopping till we do what God has sent me to do. That's perseverance, folks. That's hanging in there. That's doing what you got to do. The biggest thing in life is perseverance. The biggest thing in life is hanging in there. The biggest thing in life is, is, is waiting until God has prepared the time and the place for you to receive what it is he has for you. Sometimes you got to wait for years and years and years and years and then more years. We talked about Abraham. He had a promise for 25 years for a son. 99 years old and still not there. I mean, my goodness. God, you promised me. It, it, he's got to be somewhere. Send the little shepherd boy down. So they sent him and they brought him in. He was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And then the Lord said, Arise. Anoint him, for this is the one. The right son was not there yet. 
And the very one that everybody discounted, the very one that nobody had any faith in, the very one that was not the answer is the answer. That's the one that God has sent to do the job. Don't settle until you get what God has promised. Don't settle in your life until you get what God has promised. Don't settle. The devil wants you to settle. He wants you to give up. He wants you to quit. He wants you to stop. He wants you to be defeated. He wants you to do all those things. Don't you stop until you get what God has promised you. If he's promised it to you, oh, they might have brought seven opportunities by and none of them are the one, then you need to stay. I'm going to stand until God brings the right opportunity. I'm going to stand until the right thing takes place. I'm going to stand until this happens because I know my God, the one that spoke the heavens and the earth into existence, the one one that has the power of life and death that God right there can do it Amen. he can do it in your situation but you got to allow God to do it problem is is we get weary in the fight we get tired in the fight we get we get tired we're like Lord you're just whipping me I'm tired of standing Lord well maybe it's time for you to quit standing and start walking my goodness take your flask fill it with oil and walk in the direction that he told you if you've been standing there that long and it ain't come yet maybe you need to move Maybe you need to take a step in faith. Maybe you need to walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. God will give you enough light to take the next step in faith. Just put that foot on out there and take you a step. My goodness, it might be right there. It may be right around the corner, and you don't know where it's at. You're waiting, and you're like, Lord, you've not sent it. What's going on? It's there. Don't settle till you get what God has promised. But here's the thing. When he sends it, don't let it pass on by. When that opportunity or that situation comes, you can't let it pass on by. Because I'm not going to promise you it's going to come back around. Or if it does come back around, it may take a long, long time to come back around. There's times where we have to wait on God. Moses waited for 40 years herding sheep out in the middle of nowhere. He was set aside. I know each and every one of us today here, if we had to wait 40 years for something, we'd have probably given up 40 times by then. That's the power of faith. I'm going to go ahead and close with verse 13 today. It says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. He broke that flask. He opened that oil up. He dumped it on him and allowed it to drip on down him. Hallelujah. He was the anointed of God. Samuel took the horn of oil. He anointed him. He dumped it all out. He poured it all out on him. I'm here to tell you folks, when that thing comes that you're praying for, when that breakthrough comes that you're waiting for, you need to go ahead and put it all in. Take every chip you got on the table and slide it on in. Hallelujah. Go all in. Don't need nothing left. Dump all the oil you got. Every bit that you filled your flask with, you dump it all out. Hallelujah. Oh, make it soppy. Fill it up. Praise God and just let it pour over it. If God's opened that door, then you need to not just walk through it. You need to run through it. Hallelujah. You need to come on through. You need to, whoa, Lord, I know it's you. Praise God. I've been waiting and I'm coming on through. Ain't nobody going to stop me. I'm coming through. That's how we need to live life in the spirit. Not timid, not scared. But when God speaks and opens the door. Man, you come right on through and walk in to your future that he's settled for you. Samuel took the horn of oil. He anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And I want you to see something that happens when we do this. There was a blessing that took place. And it wasn't on Samuel. It was on the anointed one. It was on David. Look, sometimes God is waiting for you to pour your oil on someone that they might receive the blessing. See, so many times we think it's all about us, man. It wasn't about, it wasn't about Samuel. It was about David. And it says from that day forward, 
the Spirit of the Lord came upon David that he was so filled with the Spirit, he was going to become the king. He was going to be the one. Samuel went through the whole thing. He went through all the brothers. He did everything he needed to do. He questioned, "Where's have you got another one? And they brought him out, little David, the sheep tender, the shepherd, that one there. And God told him to arise and anoint him, for this is the one. He took all the oil. He anointed him. In the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Praise God. When you read about David in the word of God, it says he was a man. Oh, after God's own heart. Hallelujah. He was one that was anointed. He was the one that was powerful. There's people we need to go ahead and we need to touch in our lives. We need to speak life into them. We need to pour the oil on them. That's why we're here. That's why we gather as a group. That's why we don't gather individually. We gather as a group because there's some of you here today that have a flask of oil. And you need to pour it on one of your brothers and sisters today. You need to allow them to be blessed and be filled with the Holy Spirit because of your obedience. Your obedience. David was filled with the Spirit from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. I'm going to close with this. Y'all please stand. I'm going to close with this today. If we stop right there, if we stop right there, and we don't say another word, it sounds like happily ever after. How many of y'all want that, happily ever after? Well, I hate to tell you, but most of the time, that's only fairy tales, folks. <laughs> that's, not, that's not real life. That's, that's, not, that's not real life. I mean, I wish it was. I wish I could say happily ever after. David was anointed with oil. He became the king. Everything was hunky-dory. Everything was all right. But I'm here to tell you, David might have been anointed. David might have been filled with the Holy Spirit of God. But David had a 25-year battle that he was going to have to go through. See, so many times we think, oh, man, hey, I got it made now, right? Hey, I feel like this whole story went from beginning to end and right back to the beginning again. This is exactly what we need. We need David as the king. Praise God, anoint him. He's filled with the Spirit of God. But it's going to take 25 years before he is actually the king. Oh, he's the king in God's eyes, but not in the people's eyes. So today, as we close today, I, I, want, you to, I want you to know God's real. Hallelujah. He's still speaking. He may be speaking to some of you right now. You're hearing him. You may be ignoring him. You may be saying, oh, no, no, I can't go there, God. I'm scared. Right? How many of you ever been scared when God spoke to you and really got a hold of you and jerked your chain a little bit and you were like, ooh, ooh, I, what's going to happen now? Well, that's not up to you to worry about. That's up to God because he has a plan and a purpose for you. But know this today, that when we walk in the will of God and in the power of the Holy Spirit, everything's not going to be easy. There's times where we are going to have to wait. There's times when we are going to have to battle. There's times we're going to have to struggle. There's times we're going to have to flounder. Right? But you know what? It's okay. Because I know who my God is. I know who he is. So today I want to open the altar. And I just want anybody that doesn't know the Lord as their Savior today. If you don't know who he is, man, I, I invite you to, to come and, and, and take a, a chance. You might be sort of like Samuel in your walk to where you've tried seven different things. I need to hold two more fingers up, right? You've tried seven different things, and none of it has brought what you need, which is the peace that passes all understanding. And I'm offering you today the one that will be the answer. Every other thing that you have had paraded before you by this world, the world told you that was the answer. That was it. That was it. That was it. That was it. And God kept saying, no, that's not it. No, that's not it. No, that's not it. And this morning, 
He's bringing Jesus Christ in front of you. The one that can speak to your heart right now and speak to your condition. He can forgive you of all your sins. He can separate your sin as far as east is from west. He will give you his spirit to live in you. And he will absolutely give you eternal life. It's a beautiful offer. And I used to think it was hard to believe that I was a sinner. And I'd fallen short of the glory of God. But I'm here to tell you, the longer I stay on this world, the more I realize that I have fallen short. That I was a sinner. Now I'm a sinner saved by grace. Amen. I mean, I'm here to tell you, there's nothing better than know who your Savior is and who has you. And, and, and so today, I want, if you don't know him, man, if you don't have that assurance, that peace in your spirit. And, and, and I know the Holy Spirit's speaking to some folks today. But if you, if you don't have that today, I want you to come on down here. And we're going to pray. And God is going to give you that peace. He's going to give you that, that salvation. He's going to give you what you need today. Maybe today you just want to praise Him, worship Him. Maybe you just need prayer, whatever it might be. I, 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 the altar's open left and the right if you want to praise Him. If you just want to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, come on down here. If you need special prayer, you want to be anointed and prayed over, come on down here and we will pray with you. But today is the day. Today's the day. Today is the day. Anytime that we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's that day. Amen. God is here. His Spirit's here. So let's close in prayer this morning. Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you that your word speaks so clearly to us, even in today's world. God, there's so many times where things have been paraded before us that we thought that was the answer. That was the end all be all. That was going to make my life so much better. And then, Lord, we realized that that wasn't it at all. Father, we know that your spirit, we know that your son can speak to our condition that wherever we are, that, Lord, you can come in and you can cleanse us and forgive us and give us eternal life. And so, God, today, we cry out for that one here today, Lord, that doesn't know you. And God, I ask that you would move mightily in their heart. And, Lord, for those today that know you and they just need strengthened then I pray that you would strengthen them today with your Holy Spirit God that you would give them an assurance Lord that the path that they're on is the one that you want them on Lord and Lord that they're just waiting until it comes to pass because you've promised them and they believed so Lord we thank you for this day we thank you for your spirit we thank you for your presence and it's in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen